The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com. Welcome to the show. A lot of stories to update you on, so I'm going to get right into it. First of all, we talked about the man who had sent envelopes, letters containing something initially identified as ricin to both President Obama and to Mississippi Republican Senator Roger Wicker. He's now been arrested. It is 45 year old Paul Kevin Curtis. He was arrested yesterday at his home in Corinth near the Tennessee state line. He's being held in Oxford, Mississippi. And a booking officer who didn't want to give his name said that uh, it is not yet clear exactly what the charges will be. He lived in this. Uh, he had been living in Corinth, which is a city of about 14,000 people in the extreme northeastern Mississippi corner for a few months. And police said they had not had any contact with him prior to his arrest. But that being said, this is an individual that federal authorities knew was regularly sending letters to members of Congress. And both letters, the one to President Obama and the one to Roger Wicker, said, quote, to see a wrong and not expose it is to become a silent partner to its continuance. And both letters were signed. I am KC and I approve this message. Interesting. Some neighbors said that Curtis initially, uh, when he first moved in, seemed to have a woman and a teenage boy living with him, but that they appeared to move out. This actually is a lone wolf, right? So we, we talk so often about how, depending on the profile of a perpetrator in, in various crimes, you'll see certain groups, certain individuals, certain areas of the political spectrum try to argue that it's a lone wolf uh, to, to kind of show the disconnected nature from anything else, any any kind of broader structure that is is following that kind of uh, uh, M.O. And oftentimes that's that's not accurate. But this actually seems to illustrate what we know of as a lone wolf. Yeah, he doesn't seem to fall into any of the, the categories we normally put these in. Yeah. Um, we actually, I actually had a situation where we got a letter that was really weird and there, there was something in it. It wasn't actually powder. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was like little scraps of something that like almost like little paper scraps, but it was hard to tell if it was even paper. It was like little fibers where we actually were like, what, what exactly is this? And should we turn it over to authorities? Uh, but then we were able to ascertain that it did not actually pose a threat, but it is, you know, when when we get uh, when we get extreme hate mail in in email form, I certainly wonder, like, well, what if this person sent something to us? Like, what would they send? Would we ever have uh, some kind of nut, for lack of a better term, doing something like this? Yeah, we I know mean, we've I... had voicemails and other contacts that have had to go to the FBI right. from people who watch the show, um, and I can only imagine that this this has to be daily given that they have male screening facilities for the president and for members of Congress. Well, I'm sure it would be much more frequent if these chemical and biological agents were, uh, you know, easier to get a hold of. That's true. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, with, with as far as it comes, uh, ricin is developed, can actually be developed um, from, from ingredients that are somewhat, uh, uh, like Common. the castor bean, I think, is what uh, you, you can actually refine into ricin, and very small amounts of it can do a lot of damage if it's ingested. Right. Um, but in any case, we seem to have the culprit here. It'll be now a matter of what is he charged with and what will happen at the trial. He has a right to a defense, does he not? I believe so, but those are going to be some serious charges. Yes, they are. Yeah.